four ways to get more value out of your engineering. Everybody wishes that engineering consultants were free, which just can't happen. Short of that, DMS aims to provide the best value out of each engineering project. As the consultant, I hate to see projects where my client tried to save a few dollars and in the process lost the chance to double or triple the value of their project. When you pay for engineering, wouldn't you prefer to get three answers instead of just one? So today we discuss four engineering tasks where you can maximize your value, extract every last drop of knowledge from your engineering project. First up is the 3D model. Many clients show incredulity about paying for a digital 3D model of their ship until they see the first images. With this, we can show bridge layouts, cabin spaces, exterior shots of the ship, all rendered in believable detail, right down to the texture of the surfaces. You experience the look and feel of your vessel after only committing a fraction of the final build cost. It sits there in clear digital detail on your screen. Spin it around, fly through it, and see each angle and detail. 3D models generate that wow factor and energize everyone to finish the project. But even better, a 3D model extends beyond mere aesthetic uses. It becomes the central linchpin when designing a new ship. As ships become more and more complex, 2D drawings just are not enough. They fail to capture all the interactions. A 3D model allows us to quickly examine multiple angles and check interferences between multiple systems. We can look at it in different views, all without needing to do new drawings. We can even submit the 3D model to some class societies as part of the drawing package, which some sources indicate can save 15 to 25% on drafting time. So now you're investing in the 3D model to save on the drafting time. To truly maximize your value though, you want to combine that 3D model with work packages for finite element analysis or computational fluid dynamics. Because the first stage of FEA or CFD requires you to develop a 3D model. So with a little foresight, you can combine the value of two projects into one 3D model. Number two task, CFD. Many clients come to me with a laundry list of conditions that they want to run for their first CFD project. That is awesome. The problem is that they discover the cost for CFD and then quickly try to shrink down that list to just one or two cases. In this case, one case would be a single vessel speed or a single wave direction, something like that. Now, true, CFD is not cheap, but don't assume that skimping on cases reduces the cost significantly. Between 50 to 80% of the cost of a CFD project resides in constructing the CFD model. A typical model construction process consists of several tasks. We need to create a 3D geometry, we need to set up the initial mesh for the simulation, set up the initial simulation physics, and then it's not going to work correctly the first time. So there's debugging and working with it to create a stable run. Then once you get to that point, you're still not done. You now have to perform mesh independent studies and use convergence checks to make sure that you have the correct mesh settings, all to ensure a quality simulation model. The figure at the right shows a slightly different process with different words to describe it, but in the end, the important part to understand here is that it's a lot of effort just to set up that CFD model. By the time a CFD model begins the prescribed production runs, that is what you've actually asked for and paid for, by that point, the CFD engineer has already run the model five to seven times just to validate and debug it to ensure it's correct and accurate. This development effort is necessary to get a reliable and accurate CFD model. You can't short circuit this. Otherwise, you just have colorful garbage. Rather than reducing that cost, let's look at the other way. Let's try to maximize the value of the analysis. Invest in more CFD cases to investigate further details. Ask, how much would it cost to actually add more cases? You might be surprised at how reasonable that is. But don't have a large budget? DMS can provide several options to reduce the cost of each run. The costs behind a production CFD run involve more than just computer time. 
There is also the labor time to run and debug those simulations, the cost of the computing resources, which is there, but it can be a minor component. We have the labor time for post-processing and turning a raw database of numbers into human readable results. And then we also have the labor time to put all of that into an engineering report and discuss it. Let's play some hypotheticals. Maybe you only need one measurement from each CFD run in each CFD case. That requires far less labor than generating five pictures, three graphs, and six numbers from every single CFD run. So that can drastically reduce your costs. Another alternative is think about trying to add five supplemental cases that are not essential to your project, but you would like them. They're the eye candy. And specify that the engineer does not need to comment on them in the final report. They're not going to be discussed. They're just there for you to use. That's again, reducing the engineering costs. Look for opportunities like this to maximize the knowledge of your CFD project and minimize the labor cost, but don't try to short circuit that initial setup. Otherwise, none of it is worth anything. And number three, damage stability analysis. Damage stability requires an engineer to examine the vessel in various damaged conditions and check that it still complies with stability regulations. The downside is the labor intensity for this type of analysis. Unfortunately, you can't really save money by trying to reduce the number of cases or limiting the analysis to only one side of the vessel. The reason that won't reduce your costs is because the real labor for a damage stability analysis originates from constructing the damage stability model. Stability analysis requires a model of the vessel. Most of these are proprietary models specific to the software, and we can't just import the geometry from another program like Rhino. And then the engineer has to develop the different damage cases, specifying all the different combinations of how those compartments can be damaged. That's often a manual operation of just go through and check all the possibilities. You see, all of that labor was just there to get you to the part where you're ready to run the analysis. Here's where it gets better though. After developing that stability model, the analysis process accelerates. Most stability software includes automation options to rapidly iterate through all the damage cases. Most of the options for damage stability get stipulated by regulations. You don't have any options to reduce the engineering costs because the engineer will not be able to report or make any definitive conclusions if you do an abridged set. The engineering conclusions will always include a caveat to say that they have not done a full analysis and so the answer might change. Cutting back doesn't help. Instead, we have to look the other direction. Try to get anything more beyond simple regulatory compliance. Dive deeper and try to expose the rationale behind those results. A typical damage stability analysis involves developing, well, probably 50 to 100 different curves of max VCG, and it's just the one limiting curve that sets your whole performance for your ship. So ask for those maximum VCG curves. Try to actually see what the vessel's performance is for each damage case. This allows you to expose the weak points on your vessel. It might be that you uncover options for improving your performance. Perhaps your ship was just limited by a single bad damage case one compartment, and all you have to do is add an extra tank in there to remove some of that lost volume, and now you can suddenly increase your ship's capacity, expand the cargo capacity above deck just because you've made a few simple changes below deck. Number four, finite element analysis for fatigue. Fatigue FEA holds great potential, both to improve vessel life and to incur a high engineering cost. Fatigue FEA really involves two analyses combined together. First, the FEA gets used to determine the stress range at various critical points in the structure. And then you perform a fatigue analysis at those points to determine the expected life for each single point. Whichever one has the shortest life, that's the limit on your structure. Unfortunately, the ocean makes things complicated. Most of the stress cycles on a ship derive from either machinery vibrations are ocean waves. Ocean waves generate a wide variety of stress ranges. They make things complicated. They make the math complicated. To reduce engineering costs here, focus on the type of the fatigue analysis. They're not all created equal. 
Full spectral fatigue requires a detailed history of the vessel operating region and records of the weather. That's very labor intensive. A simpler option would be the simplified fatigue assessment. Rather than generating each wave from past history, this creates an assumed distribution of waves based upon a couple critical numbers, and it applies the Weibull distribution. Same results, but a little less accuracy with a little less labor. I wouldn't use this for critical mission areas, but if you're trying to just eke a little bit more life out of your vessel, it has a lot of potential. This method doesn't work for all situations though. Like I said, it depends on how critical the region and the application is. But it makes a great cost saver when applicable. Here's another option. Maybe you don't need every point analyzed. The engineer does the FEA and they found out that there are 50 individual points that have potential for fatigue. Now that's a typical FEA result. You've got lots of potential sites. But maybe you don't actually have to analyze every single one. Some points are more important than others. Work with the engineer, discuss your options, and select only a few sites for full fatigue life predictions. The remaining sites can just be noted down as areas for more frequent inspection. That focuses on predictive maintenance of your vessel and still works to help extend your vessel life, but at a lower engineering cost. So everybody wins. We all want to feel good about paying for engineering analysis. And sometimes the best answers drive us towards maximizing value rather than minimizing cost. Engineering is not a commodity. Some tasks have minimum costs to ensure safety and reliable results. Reliability is very important. It has value because remember, you're trusting your life to this ship. You want to know that you can depend on the answers from the engineer. In those cases, you do better to go beyond basic safety. Search for enhancements. Many times, the key to getting a satisfactory engineering process to make sure that you feel good about your project, that lies in asking for more, not less. Thanks very much. I'm Nick, the Naval Architect. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click that like button and subscribe for more videos. And did you know that we produce more than just videos at DMS? Check out our website to find more articles, free downloads, and other help with ship design. We offer a host of engineering services for budgets large and small. So check us out to see if we can make your next project easier.